Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another video. So I have been playing Conqueror's Blade for like almost three years now and have literally thousands of hours in this game. The game is so unique and does have a lot of positives, but actually it's also got its fair share of problems. And so in today's video, I want to try and summarize not only what the game is about, but also its positives and negatives. So that if you're coming to the game now as a new player, you can decide if Conqueror's Blade is going to be worth playing in 2022. So I guess it makes sense to kick this thing off with a summary of what Conqueror's Blade is actually about. Because for me, this is actually one of the game's main positives, because it is so unique, there really isn't anything else out there like it. You're going to get to control a hero. There's 12 different weapon classes to choose from, and each hero is going to get abilities, armour, equipment. But you also, more than that, get to control a unit of AI troops. These could be spearmen, archers, cavalry, swordsmen, mace infantry, pike infantry, and so on. There's really loads to pick from. Your hero is, of course, really important and actually can make a fairly big impact on the fight. But so are your troops, and your troops are not useless and they can make a huge difference in fights. This is then sort of all bundled together in these 15v15 PvP siege battles, in which the attackers are basically tasked with not only sort of pushing siege towers, battering rams and breaching the castle walls, but then taking control of a number of capture points throughout the castle map. And then once they capture these points, they win the game, and the defenders obviously are trying to hold them off for a set period of time. It sort of feels a little bit like Mountain Blade meets Dynasty Warriors, with a few sort of World of Tanks mechanics thrown in for good measure. The MMO aspect of this game comes in the form of not only an upgrading and crafting new hero equipment and weapons, but also unlocking and levelling up new units to bring with you into battles. This might be something like starting off with a unit of serfs, before upgrading them into a spear militia, a pike militia, a prefecture pikeman, an imperial pike guard, and maybe eventually some iron reapers, some top tier heavily armoured infantry. And this kind of, for me, opens up the first core question that I want to cover. What is the game's grind like? This is of course always going to be a bit subjective, as everyone has a bit of a different idea of what is quote unquote grindy. But the game does, at least in my opinion, have a reasonably tough grind. If you compare it to something like World of Tanks or War Thunder, then yeah, it's not so bad. The Conqueror's Blade grind is much less. But the grind to level up these units is still very much there. And once you get past level 60, the matchmaker is going to start throwing you into these sort of full tier matches. You'll be encountering veteran players who have been playing the game for many months or years and they're going to be starting to come at you with max level units. It is all counterable, but it can make for a slightly brutal experience, and until you start to get a few sort of decent units of your own levelled up. I should also add though that the game's tutorial and sort of player catch-up rewards are far better now than they have ever been, and so you do start to get access to high tier units much earlier than you do before, but it still takes time to adjust and learn the game mechanics and how it all works. But what about pay to win? Can you pay to get an advantage in Conqueror's Blade? In short, not directly, no. There is nothing you can buy equipment wise or unit wise that cannot be unlocked in the game as normal. The game does offer cosmetics for units, for heroes, but they don't actually have any impact on how the unit or hero performs, they're just a visual change. The game does, however, have pay to progress. This is in the form of stuff like a premium account, which allows you to level up your hero and units faster, unlocking seasonal units by spending sovereigns to skip the challenges. This is going to allow players to basically get the unit quicker, effectively buy the unit, when other players who are playing you know, free to play have got to complete the challenges to of course unlock this. All the units can be unlocked for free, so it is more pay to progress than directly pay to win, but I suppose by paying to unlock and get access to these units earlier than other players, that is giving you a bit of an advantage. But I'll let you kind of make up your mind based on that, whether you think it's more pay to win or pay to progress. There's certainly an element of it, 
but you're certainly not going around buying direct sort of boosters that give you in-game bonuses. The same units are the same for all players. This then leads me onto one of the game's current biggest problems in my opinion, unit balance. Each unit in Conker's Blade is unique, with its own set of stats, abilities and weapons, all of which function differently from other units. But the general idea is that units are split into one of five tiers. But sometimes things go wrong and the developers get the balance wrong and say a tier 4 unit becomes vastly more powerful than anything else in the game. This of course upsets the game balance and makes it much harder to use or at least enjoy using other units since everyone who's playing just uses the current sort of quote unquote meta unit. And in the past the speed of which changes are then made to update and nerf or correct these units had really been quite slow. More recently the developers seem to have acknowledged this and promised quicker balancing patches, but it is still something to watch out for. Before we go on to sort of hop into a few bits of a siege battle, I also wanted to touch on the end game, which is Conqueror's Blade takes in the form of territory wars which is where houses and alliances basically fight for control of territory in the open world. It does get reset every season, but it basically ends in fights to control the regional capitals. It's where, you know, different player houses are sort of pitching against each other in these siege battles to try and control these regional capitals, and also to try and control the other sort of smaller towns and villages around the map, and ultimately be crowned the season winner, which comes with some pretty cool titles and attires. It does all get very competitive and is taken very, very seriously, but it's very much the end game feature of Conqueror's Blade. This is what people go to when they've been playing for a long time, got all the units unlocked, and are sort of looking for that next level. But anyway, let's just hop into a few little siege battle clips and you can get a bit of an idea of how the games progress. So we've hopped into a little bit of a random siege battle. I'm going to go and assign my peasants to start pushing that siege tower because we need to get the siege towers in to be able to start mounting the walls. But if I just bring up the map now, you can kind of see the various points we've got to capture. We've got to capture both the A point and the B point. And once we capture one of them, that will unlock C and then from C to the final base. So you can see the capture points you're aiming for to actually capture this castle. But while the peasants are still pushing in those siege towers, I'm going to grab on some artillery and just try and sort of bombard the walls a bit, take down some of the enemy artillery, damage some of the enemy defences. Because the main aim at the start of the game is to get those siege towers in, get the battering ram to the gate and get through this first layer of defence, get through the outer walls. Once you actually get into the city though, that's when the sort of close quarter fighting starts. And there's really a lot of options you have available to you. You can sort of go just straight for the front line. We can actually see, look, the main capture point we're trying to capture there. Or you can sort of take more of a sneaky approach. It is a city after all once you're inside the walls. There are back alleys and tiny little routes that you can take like this. And then you can sometimes work your way back and actually sneak in on some of the enemy archers that are hidden at the back of the map. Just like this. So there are multiple options available to you for sort of combat once you're in the city. You can use infantry like I'm using here. You can use cavalry or you can be a ranged player. And there we go, we just killed an enemy player. You do get to respawn. Um, as a hero, but when you die, essentially the more you die, the longer your respawn time becomes. So you'd want to try and avoid dying, at least too often, as a hero. We then can sort of get to work, we managed to take a few people down, that hero managed to escape, and I do try and sort of flank the enemy lines here, but unfortunately, there's actually quite a lot of them. Maybe a few too many, a few more than perhaps I was expecting, and actually managed to get a little bit overwhelmed by a handful of enemy heroes and units, and unfortunately, meet my demise. But it gives you an idea what the combat is like in this game and kind of how these 15v15 siege battles actually play out. Anyway, hopefully this has given you an interesting introduction as to kind of what the game is all about. Conqueror's Blade certainly has a lot of negatives but it's also very unique. There's really nothing else like it on the market and it is a lot of fun and it is of course a free to play game so you've really not got anything to lose by checking it out. Anyway, hopefully you found the review interesting. If you have any sort of further or more detailed questions about the game, do throw them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching guys, and I shall see you all on the next video.